What's going on all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And it is finally time for your advanced overview of the Immortal Iron Fist and the Immortal Weapons Omnibus from Marvel Comics. It's been a long time coming, but it is finally here this week. Stay tuned. Now, before getting started, I want to give a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on February 28th or March 1st, depending on where you get your books. But it is finally coming out. We've had a lot of delays for this book. Not just this one, but a lot of other Marvel, DC, Image Comics. It's just been delay after delay, but it is finally here. Oh my gosh, this is one of my most anticipated releases of this year. It's one that we got expanded because it was just going to be a reprint of Immortal Iron Fist by Ed Brubaker, Matt Fraction, and David Aha, but they listened and they expanded it to the Immortal Weapon, so I'll be talking a little bit about that here in a second. But first, the cover we're looking at here is the direct market cover by Patrick Searcher. On the left-hand side is your standard edition cover by David Aha. And of course, these spines are different. I say of course, I'm sorry. Not every spine is different. In this case, they are different. It's almost case by case. And I do try to showcase the different spines when I can, or at least when Marvel sends me the files. But everything else underneath the books are identical. So let's bring it back to this with this image of Danny Rand, Iron Fist, and the Immortal Weapons. And who are the Immortal Weapons? Well, I'll be talking about the book, so uh, I'll tell you when that part is going to come up and in case you don't want any kind of spoilers at all. But here is the spine, the Immortal Iron Fist, and the Immortal Weapons, the Creators, Brubaker, Fraction, Zerzinski, Aha, Foreman, and Heath. And then there's that image of Danny right there. And this back image right there of Danny Rand, like unto... A thing of iron. All right. And then what is collected in here? The price of the book, $125. Rated T+. Plus. That's mainly due to some of the language, some edgy language. Um, now, underneath the dust jacket, we'll look at that here in a second. But first, let's look at these flaps right here. So on the left-hand side, it's a little bit about who Iron Fist is. On the right-hand side, you have the creators right there. Pretty much most of the people that worked on the book, including Russ Heath, who we lost back in 2018. And then here again is a little bit about the characters that are going to be popping up here. Now, underneath this dust jacket, you have the images of different covers with this yellow greenish tone to it. So you can see some of the covers collected like this. Now, these are the covers, I believe, that use the white space. So the white space were something like this. But So yes. I never got the original Omnibus. Why? Why did I ever pick up the first Omnibus? It's not because I did not enjoy the story, but because it wasn't complete, I thought. While Ed Brubaker and Matt Fraction and David Aha do a phenomenal job in telling the first part of the story, I thought, oh, this is a missed opportunity. They should have done another oversized hardcover or another omnibus, but they never did. So I just got the trade paperbacks that make up this omnibus. As a matter of fact, this omnibus has more than the trade paperbacks. And that's why I never picked it up because I thought, uh, it's not complete. I don't know why I, I have the JMS Thor omnibus. That wasn't complete either, but I think I'm a bigger fan of Olivier Coipel's artwork than I am David Aha. Now, before I get started, before we crack this open, before you even look at a one image in the book in case you want zero spoilers the only thing i'm going to do right now is talk about what you should read before this the very important runs to read are daredevil by ed brubaker because this will spoil something in that run that you don't want spoiled for you and civil war because this actually kicks off with civil war choosing sides and that spoils both a little bit of what happened in Civil War and what ended up happening in Daredevil by Ed Brubaker's run. So, that's pretty much it. Why didn't I mention any Iron Fist or Luke Cage or Heroes for Hire? Because you don't need to have read any of that. Does it help? Absolutely. When you see old characters appear through here, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, it's the Steel Serpent. But you don't need to because they do such a phenomenal 
job of reintroducing this character to you that you don't need to have read any Iron Fist before then. I just didn't want things spoiled for you in case you're in the middle of reading Ed Brubaker's run and you're like, oh man, that sucks. I'm not even going to be showing any of the artwork and choosing sides because I think even the people that like spoilers or don't mind spoilers, a little bit of spoilers about the premise of the book, don't want that ruined for them because that actually ruins something from another book. So just in case, you know, and if, hey, if you don't care about spoilers, sorry, not this time. I can't spoil that. I think it's a really cool twist. And it actually answers one of the big questions of Civil War. And you'll know what I'm talking about if you've read it. Okay, we're going to open this book up and talk about the stories in here, the premise, and look at this beautiful artwork in here. And of course, check out the build of the book. And I'll put the timestamps in the description of the video for the people that just want to see the build of the book. All right. Opening the book up and we have some awesome green and sheets. I like that. Simple, but to the point where there are two Iron Fist. Well, you're here to get the premise of the book. So we're going to go a little bit into spoiler territory and I'll talk a little bit about that here in a few. Here is your table of contents. And this isn't really, I'm sorry, this isn't really a table of contents. This is much more of a credits page because the book isn't really mapped like this. It's mapped a little bit different, which we'll talk about here in a few. Uh, but you do start it off with Civil War choosing side. So here you'll find out who the writers are, who the penciler is, the inkers, the colorist, letters, cover artist, which is very important. And we're going to go to issue number one. So this is Immortal Iron Fist issue number one. So this collects Immortal Iron Fist 1 through 27. The original omnibus only went up to 16. Uh, this also collects the annual number one and Immortal Iron Fist Orson Randall and the Green Mist of Death one shot. And you also have the Origin of Danny Rand one shot in here. The Choosing Sides material from that. And you also have Orson Randall the Death Queen of California one shot. Immortal Weapons 1 through 5. And to wrap it up, very nice, because a few years later, uh, Dwayne Swarzynski came back and did, I think it was like 10 pages of Iron Man Avenger to wrap up the stories that he kind of left uh, towards the end of his run on Iron Fist before it, the series ended. So it wraps up nicely. All right. Oh my gosh. Now, so much to talk about, so I'll just keep it simple. No, I can't. There's a lot to talk about, so I'm just going to get to the point. Oh my gosh, this David Aha artwork. Holy crap. This artwork is so gritty. It's so non-polished. Because by the time you get to Hawkeye, so this all came out right around 2007, 2008 is when the series was coming out. Hawkeye doesn't take place until 2013. So by then, David Aha had time to actually perfect his style. Now, he is a Spanish artist, I believe. And this was his big American break here. And yeah, his art isn't really refined. It's not clean and crisp. It's a little hard to follow, especially when there's more than one Iron Fist on page. But holy crap, is it so good. I love it. It fits the tone of the story. Especially when you can tell it's Ed Brubaker writing a grittier part of the story. Mad Fraction always adds that little bit of lightheartedness. You get a lot of that in Hawkeye. And not that he can't write dark stories, because he can, but there's just a difference between the way that he writes something and Ed Brubaker writes. And you can definitely tell that, oh man, Ed Brubaker just loves to work with this particular artist. So what exactly is going on here? What, what, what is this omnibus about? Well, the Ed Brubaker and Matt Fraction part is broken up into three different story arcs. Uh, you have the last Iron Fist story, which again, reintroduces us to Danny Rand. And I said you didn't have to read anything before here because believe me, it is all in your face with his origin, no matter how many times. I swear, I think I must have read his origin story through this omnibus at least four times. Does it get old? Eh, maybe a little bit. Mileage may vary. And then you're introduced to the concept that there have been Iron Fist in the past. So you see Bei Ming Tian here, Iron Fist. From 1227 AD. Now this is something new to the mythos of Iron Fist. Uh, because Iron Fist had his own series. And then of course that series ended. And he ended up being with Luke Cage Heroes for Hire. Up until the ending of that series. Which is around issue 126. Now there's a lot of disagreement by fans as to how that series ended. 
So much so that when John Byrne, the artist at that time, or was he? No, no, he wasn't. He did work on Iron Fist, though. Uh, but he brought the character out of obscurity. I'm not going to go into details how or why in his pages of Namor. So that was in 1991. And since 1991, we really haven't had a series featuring Iron Fist. He had a couple of miniseries. He was in a Heroes for Hire miniseries, but nothing really ongoing. So it was really interesting to see this character brought out of obscurity for Ed Brubaker to take over. I think he had a lot of fun writing uh, Captain America and Daredevil, and he wanted to try out this character because Danny Rand is a lot different than Captain America and Daredevil. All right, so we talk about a mythos that they're starting here, that there have been other Iron Fists before Danny Rand, and we get to meet this new character here. His name is Orson Randall. Now, Orson Randall, you come to find out, is the Iron Fist right before Danny Rand became Iron Fist. But he's the Iron Fist that left his responsibilities in Kun Loon. So Kun Loon is where Danny Rand went with his father and he got his powers there. It's this mystical city that only appears so many times every few years. And in here, it kind of throws you for a loop because... If there was another Iron Fist before Danny Rand, what does that mean? What is the legacy of Danny? And you get to see more and more Iron Fist from the past. That's how each of these issues start off. You get to see the wonderful relationship between Luke Cage and Danny Rand. And that's something that's always been touched upon, even in the TV show. As much as I wasn't a fan of that Netflix Iron Fist show, at least they got some of that right, especially in the Defenders uh, miniseries. I think it was a miniseries. There's only one issue. So in here you have Orson Randall, he's being pursued by agents of Hydra, and he's being pursued by agents of the Steel Serpent. And in here you'll find out that Davos Steel Serpent have something to do with Danny Rand's past. Matter of fact, has something to do with his origin in Kun Loon. So as you turn the pages here and you get to see a new issue, you get to find a new Iron Fist from the past. And that past story sometimes affects how Danny is handling the present, what he's doing about it. Because he kind of has been in hiding. It wasn't just that his books weren't selling, let's just say that. It was that the character himself just decided not to play the role of hero, not to be in the spotlight for a while. And he's decided to come out of obscurity and become a hero and reunite with a couple of other characters from his past. So in here, you're going to see Colleen Wig. Uh, you're going to see Misty Knight, who plays a very big, important part in Danny's life. But you're also going to see some of his enemies, like the Steel Serpent and even his mentor or his teacher. And this does have some elements that have changed. It's a little more violent than the past Iron Fist issues or the past Iron Fist stories. And hey, those are getting an omnibus. So sometime, I believe towards the end of the year is when that book is coming out. No, it's in January of 2024. How dare I? I'm the one that got to announce it. Why the hell didn't I know that? So the first six issues completely wrap up this story introducing us to Orson Randall, and you'll get to see some of the one-shots, because you saw the names, like, go back to his past, how long he's been around, and why he's been around so long. And flashbacks are always done by a different artist. And then we get to issue number seven. I'm not going to go through each issue, I promise you, but I find this really interesting. So in issue number seven, it's the story of the Iron Fist, Wu Ao Shi, the pirate queen of Pingai Bay. So that's what this focuses on. This is the story of the first female Iron Fist who lived around 1545 AD. And you get to find out a little bit about her. Now, in the first six issues, you're introduced to the concept that there are seven capital cities of heaven. And that's what this is. The seven capital cities of heaven. That's what the next story arc is. This goes through issues 8 through 14 of Iron Fist. And here you get to meet these characters so the theory was that kun lun was one of these seven cities of heaven that only appear on earth from time to time and there's this big tournament between six other cities and each of these cities picks one particular fighter to represent them so remember when i said lei kung the thunderer his teacher was going to be featured through here he is a big part of all this so here you have these six different fighters. So there's a tournament that's going to take place between all seven of these characters, including Danny Rand, who represents Kung Lu, because he's the Iron Fist. But you have Fat Cobra, 
who I love, his one shot towards the end in the weapons of, or the immortal weapons is freaking awesome. The Bride of the Nine Spiders, Dog Brother 1, Tiger's Beautiful Daughter, the Prince of Orphans, and the new weapon, and that is Davos right there, the Steel Serpent. So these seven characters are going to fight, and the winner will represent their city, of course, and this pretty much decides which order the seven cities of heaven will appear on earth. That's what this tournament is for. So it is a huge tournament. It kind of reminds me of those classic Dragon Ball. Not Dragon Ball Z. Well, maybe a little bit of Dragon Ball Z with the Cell Saga or the Cell games. Uh, that's what it reminds me of. It's a lot of fun. And you can tell that by then, Ed Brubaker had kind of taken a step back and letting Matt Fraction just have fun with the book. But I'm okay with that because it was a lot of fun. Now, remember when I said this goes through issues 8 through 14 of Immortal Iron Fist. In between issues 10 and 11 is where they put the annual. And the annual works as a little bit of a flashback with a bunch of characters. It has the character of Orson Randall there and just retelling a lot of his past. Now, it was mapped differently, at least in the trade paperbacks. I'm not sure how it was mapped in the original Omnibus. But I kind of liked it because when I reread this, I was like, oh, that's a really unique place for this because it's in between the two. It's not the first time they do it. Now, it doesn't really break up the flow of the story. I think it actually makes sense to tell a little backstory to take a break from all that fighting. And then we go back to the tournament. I know people are going to compare it to something like, oh, yeah, that's going to be like the filler episodes of Dragon Ball Z. But it's not, I promise, because it was written by the same team. And then we get the Orson Randall and Green Mist of Death one shot. This happens after issue number 12. So again, not wrapping it up. As a matter of fact, it's kind of fattening up the seven capital cities of heaven storyline by showing us these backup stories. So I thought that was a unique way of breaking it up, showing these backup stories that affect the ongoing story, but not putting them all together because I can see why that might actually break the flow. Because I think putting them all together would be a mistake because then you're just reading the mighty misadventures of Orson Randall instead of going back to the tournament and finding out how Orson is even playing a role in all of this. But I like finding out little by little about his past. So then we wrap up that story arc. And then issue number 15 is the story of Iron Fist, Bay Bang Wen. And this place, or uh, this takes place around 1860, I believe. And then the 17th issue is all written by Matt Fraction. So like I said, Ed Brubaker takes a step back. Matt Fraction wraps up the 17th issue or 16th issue of Iron Fist before Dwayne Zrzynski takes over the run. And this is all about Danny Rand's birthday. It's his 33rd birthday. And he finds out a secret about the previous Iron Fist that has something to do with his birthday. You can find out what that is. And then Dwayne Zrzynski's run starts with issue number 17 here. This is the mortal Iron Fist and it takes place between issues 17 and 20. This is also where they break up the story. So they give you the first chapter with issue number 17, and then you get the origins of Danny Rand. This is where the one shot is. And I'm not sure why they decided to put it here in between chapters one and two of the mortal iron fist, because the mortal iron fist introduces us to this particular character. He's a servant of Shai Lin. It's, his name is uh, Zhou Cheng, I think. And he's going around in, He's claiming that he's killed previous Iron Fist, and now he's after Danny Rand. Now, this is really interesting because it's Matt Fraction framing around these two classic stories. We get the introduction of the character of Iron Fist. So this has Roy Thomas and Gil Kane with some new dialogue. Then we have some Larry Hama artwork here. And that quickly introduces you to the character of Danny Rand. Another retelling of his origin. Uh, then we get the Mortal Iron Fist story wrapped up. Now, after issue number 20, we get another one-shot. So it's a break in between issues 20 and the next story arc that's about to start. So this is the Orson Randall and the death of the Queen of California. It's another story. This is uh, Giuseppe Kamen Coley drawing this. But it's another flashback of Orson Randall's past. The Iron Fist that preceded Danny Rand. And then we get to issue number 22. And this is the beginning of the next saga, and that is Escape from the Eighth City. 
Now, this is where people are going to be like, oh my gosh, it's a misprint. They've skipped some issues. Because probably something you've noticed, as I just said, it wraps up with issue number 20. There's the Orson Randall story. And then we go to issue number 22. Issue 21 is actually after this because it takes place in the year 3099. I understand why they did it. It would have been so confusing. It still is confusing, even when you read it the first time. Um, so this is the escape from the eighth city. I'm not even going to go into the title um, as to what that means. But let's just say that Danny Rand and friends are trapped in an eighth city. And I just talked about the seven cities that haven't. But yeah, you can figure it out. The eighth city is a lot different than those cities, though. And by now, by the way, I was going to say, Travel Foreman has taken over the art instead of it being David Aha on artwork. Now, as you're reading Escape from the Eighth City, you're going to see that it's a four-part saga. It's issues 22, 23, 25, and 26. It skips another issue. Issue 24 is found all the way in the back as well. But before we get to those issues that we're missing, here's issue 27, and then this wraps up everything in... Dwayne Zorzenski's run. This is Danny Rand and how he's dealing with things back in New York. Then you get issue number 24, the story of Iron Fist Lee Park. And this is in 730 AD, another Iron Fist from the past. And then that's issue 24, by the way. This is issue number 21. This is the one that I said was set in the future in the year 3099. It's about the Iron Fist of 3099. Now, this one does have a spoiler, so I'm not even going to talk about who that is, and then that's where the Immortal Weapons are collected. So it's a five-issue miniseries, one book focusing on one particular character of the Immortal Weapons. This one here is the Book of Cobra, and it spots like, or spotlights the character of Bat Cobra. This one's written by Jason Aaron, and they're all written by different people. The second book, this one right here, this is the Bride of Nine Spiders book. I think this is the Spiders book. I think that's what it's called. This one's Colin Bunn. Here's Dog Brother number one. This one's Rick Spears. Uh, here you have the Tiger's Beautiful Daughter. This is the one that actually features Dwayne Zorzenski coming back to the characters. And then you have the Prince of Orphans storyline. This one's written by David Lapham. And in the back of all of this is where you're going to find... More adventures of Danny Rand. Now, in the very back, the last thing you're going to find in here is the books of Iron Fist. It's that little short story from I Am an Avenger. And that's it. That's pretty much how the mapping works. I just didn't want people to freak out whenever they see books like this. And there's a missing issue. Or there's an annual in between an ongoing storyline. That was done on purpose. It wasn't a misprint. It, it makes sense when you're reading the story, but at first glance, you know, because we worry about that. Whenever you open up a book and you're like, oh my gosh, my book has a misprint. This issue is missing. It's all the way in the back. Why is it doing this? I promise that it makes sense in the reading order. All right, let's welcome back everybody else and that did not want to see any spoilers. All right, let's look at the back matter. So we're looking at extras and I just went over the fact that, hey, the book is in reading order. That's all I will say. I won't go into detail like I did with everybody else that was there or the spoilery part, or semi-spoilery part. Here's character designs, of course, by David Aha. Even the character, or the cover art design right there. We're not going to go into detail as who they, those people are. And here's some original pages. Now, it's not just, yeah, I was going to say, it's not just Iron Immortal Iron Fist by David Aha. There's also the Immortal Weapons sketchbook all the way in the back here. And some original artwork. And then, of course, the Iron Fist symbol. And some end paper there. Now, the binding. 1,048 pages. It is sewn binding. And it is printed at the Donley printer. Now, we're going to go back. We're going to go back to issue number one. So you can see what the bleed through is going to look like when there's a bunch of white. And this is what it will look like. You can see the borders and the frames. Sometimes you can see some of the caption boxes or word bubbles. Luckily, there's not a lot of white space, but when there is, you can tell some of the art is coming through. It's not the thinnest paper. I've seen thicker paper at both Donley and iMac, so it really is a case by case, but I did want to point that out. Let me see. Just wanted to show how the book laid over with the spread pages here. So you can see very minimal gutter loss right there. 
and that's due to the binding that's due to that eye of the book so there's a little bit of a gutter curve but not much i don't think i can show anything in the back uh, but i did want to point out what it looked like here and then towards the middle of the book how it lays over can't show any spread pages but just, i can show this and then how it lays over towards the back but also wanted to point out again when it's a lot of white you're going to see a little bit of bleed through but that as they say is that if you're interested in purchasing this book don't forget to check out our sponsors if you're in europe and you're interested in buying these books definitely check out walt's comic shop in berlin germany they have the cheapest pre-order prices flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all eu countries emails answer within 24 hours waltzcomicshop.com and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you have the original omnibus, if you had the trades, the single issues, if you're going into this run completely blind just based on what you've heard, or whether you're a fan of Ed Brubaker, Matt Fraction, Dwayne Zorosensky, or David Aha, Travel Foreman, whatever brought you to this book, oh my gosh, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, but that's it for the overview. If you have any questions, leave your questions down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Thank you so much to our patrons. Could not be making videos like this possible without you all. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.